time. Hey, everybody, thank you so much for listening to Real Pineapple. Yay! Whoa. <laughs> well, that, still, that still gets me every time. <laughs> as, as well as should. Uh, this is Hunter here. I'm here with Colin. Colin, how you doing, I'm friend? doing good. How are you? Uh, I'm great, because we are going to talk about <laughs> a movie that we were... <laughs> Very curious uh, to see. We were talking about sausage. Uh, I almost said sausage. Uh, sausage fest again. Uh, like, <laughs> damn, 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 wandering mind of mine. Uh, we're talking about sausage party. And man, I gotta tell you right now, um, I didn't know what to expect. What to expect going into this, um, this movie <laughs> both amazed. And horrified me in ways I can't even put in the words. <laughs> oh man, yeah, this was this was something else. I definitely have to say. <laughs> what? So what? What was the uh, what was the crowd like in the theater you saw this one in? So I so we saw this fr- I saw this Friday night. Uh, I think you saw it Thursday. Uh, you saw it opening. Like you saw it Thursday, right? No, I got uh, I got um, a couple of uh, premiere tickets through some friends so we went and saw oh, that's right. we went and saw this Monday night yeah we were actually sitting there with all like you know like the fancy critics and I was like fuck all y'all I'm I'm the best critic in this joint <laughs> well first off you're goddamn right you yeah. are but <laughs> definitely the be- definitely the best looking but um, yeah but best, you know but, best sausage for the fest it's like <laughs> nice <laughs> I see what you did there but uh yeah I saw this uh Friday after work and with my with my coworker and uh, me and her, we were really excited going in. You know, we got some drinks before. I wanted to be nice and buzzed and ready for this movie. Uh, so the plot of this movie is it, it's very interesting. So really, all this movie is so um, this takes place around the Fourth of July, and um, basically it's uh, Seth Rogen uh, who plays Frank. Uh, um, he he uh so they basically have instilled this belief that the great beyond which is what happens when you get chosen by a customer is like it's like their heaven and so frank is trying to get to the great beyond along with uh Kristen Wiig and I did not recognize her voice who plays Brenda who's a hot dog bun uh, I did not recognize her Oh you didn't know Wig. she I was like, in this <laughs> I di- I didn't I didn't look at really the cast I didn't look at the cast list or anything before I went in I was like oh wow so when it got to the credits, there were actually some surprises. I'm like, oh, shit, that's awesome. But uh, Chris and Wig uh, and Seth Rogen, their chemistry uh, was actually really, really good in this. Um, so they're trying to get to the great beyond. Uh, there's uh, Jonah Hill, uh, America's Sweetheart, who plays Carl, who's uh, – that's the deformed – uh, sausage, right? Like the short one. Uh, yeah, I or, think it's either him or Michael Sarah. I think I think it's I think Jonah Hill was the short one. Yeah. Okay, and then um, and then Michael Sarah plays Barry. Um, They're all sausages but, uh, in the same pack. Yeah, exactly. So. They uh so they're trying to get to the uh, they're trying to get the great beyond and they end up forming a enemy in uh, a douche <laughs> <laughs> literally like literally like, a douche <laughs> yeah played by Nick Kroll who was maybe my favorite part of the movie um and so the douche <laughs> the douche is after him. <laughs> I'm really happy to say that in review uh, and he's um, like straight up Bobby Bottle service in this in this role too which is amazing. Yeah, he's body ball service mixed with the douche from Parks and Rec. Like that's what, which which gave me more joy when I realized I was Nick Kroll. Like he's literally playing the douche <laughs> right now. And so this this douche is so the douche like falls and like cracks itself open, which was really fucking funny. And then it ends up um, as he puts it, sucking the dick of a of a juice box to get more energy <laughs> and then drinking to keep this, this movie's insane. Like as the, the more I'm going over the synopsis of the plot, it, it oh my God, Colin. So you saw this at a premiere with, with critics. What, what were their reactions? I'm very curious. Yeah. Well, I mean the whole place was packed and, uh, it was honestly like, it was hard to hear a lot of the dialogue cause people were like dying the whole time. Uh, there was so many times where it was like, I was like straining to hear what was going on because like I was laughing, like the whole crowd was, was laughing like a lot (laughs) throughout it. Um, 
so yeah, like even like all the critics and everybody. So I was, I was um, surprised. Well, I wasn't really surprised once it started going because, um, yeah, a lot of the jokes were killing. Yeah, I I know for me, man, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, I think the thing that surprised me the most was ex- how incredibly smart this movie was. I think that was the thing that shocked the shit out of me because it really is a big, giant... I mean, there's social groups here, you know, represented by food. Um, I think one of the jokes I laughed at the hardest was... Uh, uh, I can't remember who was saying it, but they're like... Who doesn't like juice? I like juice. I think juice is, is like juice, juice, haha. And and I was I was face palming at so many points in this movie. There there's so many jokes. I feel bad. I can't remember them all. I'm gonna have to go see this again because I'm right there with you. The the crowd I saw it with was laughing so hard. I want to be like, shut the fuck up. I'm trying to hear every joke. Like this reminded me really a lot of Scott Pilgrim in the sense that there's so much to, like, witness in the movie and so many jokes and, like, sight gags that I I appreciate it more the second time I saw it, which I think is going to be the case for this, too. Um, also, Danon McBride plays Honey Mustard, and he gives us a really cryptic, um, <laughs> this really cryptic di- uh, monologue before diving out of the cart to his death, which yeah, was... Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's basically, was... like, gone to the great beyond and returned to, like, tell the horrors of the reality of, like, you know... Uh, and, and and basically, like, challenges everyone's beliefs of the great beyond. Yeah, and um, it, it's actually kind of crazy, and so... And it's um, funny, too, because, that, like, a bunch of the fruits was like, he's like, well, we don't want to believe that. That sounds awful. I'm going to still believe in the nice, happy beyond. <laughs> and it was just, like, a really funny... Th- there was, like, so many, like, um, just, like, narratives and... and <laughs> uh, jokes that were going on like atheism and and Judaism and, and Christianity and everything like all the religions are like hitting on and uh, it was kind of funny to see like all of those like really serious topics kind of just being made fun of by a bunch of food. Yeah, it, and it, it it really surprisingly, man, it it, it worked so well. Um, the jokes they were making too. I mean, it, it's very. I mean, it's obvious social commentary, but it's it's done really well. Um, I was really impressed with it. Um, one knock I do have, definitely have against this movie is, uh, man, the animation looks like garbage. It looks really bad. I thought the animation was pretty fucking terrible, to be totally honest. Um, I thought it looked bad in the trailers, and I was like, oh, okay, they'll clean it up. No, no, not really. It, it looks bad, but... It reminded me so much of um, this animated movie, Hoodwinked, uh, where uh, the animation was not good on it at all, but the movie was just so fucking funny, you just didn't care after a point, and that's exactly what what this movie, that category, falls into. Um, as I mentioned, Seth Rogen's great as Frank, uh, Jonah Hill was great, uh, James Franco has like a cameo, basically, but he was funny. Uh, Craig Robinson playing Grits, I thought <laughs> was absolutely hilarious. Uh, Edward Norton is in this movie, which I was like, Ed- what? I was like, why is Edward Norton in this? But that makes me love Edward Norton more. Um, uh, y- y- yeah, I-, I yeah, the last thing I saw Edward Norton in was a uh, was Grand Budapest. <laughs> so it's been two years and he comes out for for sausage party yeah so, i know so. it, it was like amazing that that he uh ended up doing a voice on this yeah I, it you know after Birdman, it really does feel like he's in on the joke of himself like how people kind of see him as like kind of crazy and so he's just he's just kind of going like fuck it like whatever i'm just gonna do what i want and sir if you keep getting roles like this keep up the great work because <laughs> i i love doing this um I, I was really sitting here for a while, uh, Colin, trying to think of complaints, and I gotta be honest, I think it gets vulgar sometimes just for the sake of being vulgar. I think there are some points where it's not as clever, it, it, it's clever, but then they kind of undercut it with, uh, with uh, just being vulgar for the sake of being vulgar. 
But at 90 minutes, this really does, which is what all comedies should be, god damn it, by the way. Um, they don't fucking uh, appetal this shit. It's not two hours, it's an hour and a half. It gets in, it gets out, it knows exactly what it needs to be, what it's shooting for. And the last 20 minutes of this movie just go insane. <laughs> and I mean it in the most complimentary way. Um, there is a, like, a fight within the, uh, the grocery store that I was legitimately amazed by. <laughs> and I will just say, the last five minutes of this movie, oh man, like you want to talk about one of the most disturbing <laughs> things I've maybe ever seen in my life. Um, so yeah, funny. I, I, oh my, like, yeah, the, your like, thoughts. Just like, like absolutely, like, <laughs> just, just roll on the floor funny. Yeah, I, I, so I mean, yeah. What did you, what did you kind of think of it, man? Like, were you expecting? Did you get more than you're expecting, or less? Or? Yeah, it was like, I mean, the red band pl- trailer kind of the main thing they show is like once you know the, the the basic premise, like you know everybody's got this grand idea of the great beyond, and then they they get chosen, and when they get chosen, you know they start rip, you know, slicing the potato and eating the baby carrots, and uh, you know after that. I had no idea what to expect because they really didn't go much further than that. They showed like a couple of things like them meeting um, the, the non-perishables, um, which were great. I thought they were kind of like these people that have lived throughout time and they know the course of history with food. And uh, they brought like this, this background to it, which I appreciated. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I didn't know what the hell to expect with this fucking movie. Um, but it just, uh, really, like, the the plot, uh, the jokes are so funny throughout that they keep making. Like, they they, they have all these fresh jokes. I mean, they, I, I think these guys are basically the funniest guys still writing comedies, like, to this day. I mean, you have, like, Seth Rogen, all these guys, all, all this, this group of guys... And, uh, and like Kristen Wiig and I don't, I don't know if there was like Selma Hayek's in it for a little bit. She's actually really funny with her voice work. Oh, okay. Oh man. Selma Hayek. I still one of the most attractive women. Her voice work was really good. Actually. I was quite surprised actually. Yeah. So she was good. But I mean, I, I just thought all, everything was like super witty, but then they also like, I think they do the, the vulgar stuff like in such a like like come out of left field and hit you up the face the side of the face you're just like you have no like <laughs> other like reaction but to just like laugh and just be like what the fuck just happened um and i appreciate that in a movie because a lot of movies are just really bad at trying to do that they'll try and do some scene that's they're they're doing like you know the crazy shock you into into you know getting a cheap laugh and a lot of movies just can't do it very well and i thought this movie did a pretty good job at it yeah i mean that that is the thing uh craig robinson is in here and he plays some grits uh bill Hader plays uh firewater and tequila <laughs> and uh el guaco uh bill Hader was funny as hell um there, there is this direct joke with Craig Robinson's grits where he goes like, "Oh yeah, you think, uh, you think the juice, uh, the juice has it bad?" Like uh, talking about crackers and talking about like, "Oh, like you know," a very clear reference to how white people treat black people. I was like, "Oh man, this movie is not holding back." And the movie is an equal, equal opportunity offender. It goes after everybody, which I appreciate because you know you can't say you love someone out because they really do hit everyone <laughs> going through this movie. Um, before we get to our final thoughts, I cannot stress this enough, how much this is not a movie for kids. Like, I know, like, I know parents didn't listen to, when, with Deadpool, even though Deadpool is practically screaming it from the mountaintop. Do not take your children to go see this movie. I'm telling you right now, there's not a child under the age of 15 who should be seeing this shit. I mean, if you're in high school, you know, you're hearing shit probably this dirty in your locker room, so, you know, whatever. But you're in middle school, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be seeing Yeah, this high shit. school, you're, you're good. Yeah, but, but middle school, c- come on now. Like, you hold on that innocence for a little longer. But uh, I thought this was, <laughs> was so well done. And like I said, the last five minutes of this movie just turns into, 
it's ver it's clearly a riff on how animated movies end with a dance number, and this movie goes the total opposite direction. <laughs> it just and I don't even want to spoil it here, but it just it just gets in, in, in insane, and I'll just leave it at that. Um, going through, man, even though the things about the um, the things about the cursing a little bit did bother me. But I gotta be honest, this is Seth Rogen's second movie in a row that's had this, that's been really funny, uh, Neighbors 2, that's had this, uh, like, surprising message with it, you know, talking about feminism, really, in the last Neighbors, and this movie talking about religion and, really, government and, and race, and the things it tackles, I was really quite impressed how they fit, how they fit it all in, so, um... This may be... This is in the top three movies, I'd say, probably in his career, uh, as far as him in a starring role, uh, if not his best movie, um, as far as all around. So, uh, I gotta give this a fan-fucking-tastic, actually. I was I was very impressed with this movie. Um, I will say, going grocery shopping yesterday was very awkward. Uh, <laughs> I, I might... I might have looked at my food a couple times and been like, okay, like, this is a little weird right after seeing this, but, uh, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed this so yeah fan fucking tastic for me uh colin your thoughts sir yeah uh going back to what you said earlier i i think uh, i definitely agree with you when when you say this is a movie that um needs a couple more watches just to to really like see all of the jokes it's like it's a movie that's like so deep with with all these different jokes that are hitting you like one after the other um not necessarily deep all the time as far as, like, how, like, you know, um, a lot of them are, are definitely pretty shallow and and, uh, um, and raunchy. But um, the thing I think I liked about this movie the most was that it was a movie that could only be done in an anim- animated format. Like, there's Agreed. no doing this movie with live action anything. Like, you just can't do it. Like with all, like with how they wanted to go about the storyline, um, the different jokes. You know, you can't have you know like a like a like a Muslim and a Jew like hanging out doing banter back and forth like the whole movie. Like unless they're a bagel and a fucking falafel or whatever the 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 you know Muslim guy is. Um, so I mean, you get that you get all of these different like jokes and and running all these different running jokes and, and storylines that could only be done in an animated format that I really appreciated seeing. It was new. It was something that I hadn't seen before, this type of, like, R-rated animated comedy. Um, so I just thought it really, really worked. And I think that the thing I liked about it was because I, I didn't know what I was about to see. I didn't know what I was expecting, and I was pleasantly surprised with, you know, how funny it really was. So, uh, yeah, I, I have to agree with you this will probably be one of my favorite movies of the year this was a fan fucking tastic for me as well nice oh so happy to hear that because i i always go in the movies i'm always curious like what did colin think and there was a point where i was just uh the opening song even for the for the from the movie was just so like what the fuck is happening (laughs) like i actually whispered that to my friend taylor i'm like what the fuck are we watching right now and she was she was probably laughing as hard as I was. She was just dying, like, what the fuck is this? And I, I was truly in awe. So, so kudos to uh, uh, everyone who wrote this. Cause this actually had uh, six screenwriters, I believe. Um, it wasn't just uh, um, it wasn't just uh, Rogan and Goldberg uh, like it normally is. They had a, uh, four or five other people. I'm so, sure they were uh, all just like in a big room, just like smoking a ton of weed, like writing all the like. They're like, we're all getting writers' credits for this, right? And they're like, yeah, sure. <laughs> you think that's that's more than likely that's how it probably went. Um, and I actually want to give uh, I want to give uh, credit to um, to uh, at least uh, this was directed by a couple people. It was directed by a. Uh, Conrad Vernon and Greg uh, Tier- uh, Tieran. Um The reason I recognize the name uh, Conrad Vernon, um, he actually did uh, directed three movies that I really actually uh, several movies I really enjoyed. Uh, he directed uh, the first two Shreks, uh, the the good ones. Um, he directed Puss in Boots, which I loved. He directed uh, <laughs> uh, Penguins of Madagascar, which I love. Um, 
Uh, oh, no, sorry, he was a voice on that. But then he directed Monsters uh, vs. Aliens, which I, if you have not seen that movie, that movie's freaking awesome. So, um, and then, ironically enough, uh, the other director, uh, Greg Tyrion, uh, he mostly has done Thomas the Tank, uh, Thomas the, ta- uh, the Tank Engine movie. <laughs> so, don't know how you go from that to Sausage Party, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. but good but good, good for that's you. That's like man. all he's done. Wow, that's insane. <laughs> yeah. So I, it's it's weird that he would just be like, you know, let's tap, let's tap this guy. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. So hey, good. Okay, good for you, man, for stepping up. That's really funny because <laughs> uh, a lot of the like facial expressions are like so similar to these like Thomas like these fucking train faces. <laughs> so. very, no, very true. I mean, he he's clearly worked with that and that kind of style of animation before, which, I mean, like I said, despite the way, fact I just didn't like the animation that much, it doesn't lend itself to this, but, um, yeah, this was, this was, <laughs> this was a treat, so, guys, have you seen, uh, Sausage Party? Let us know what you thought, uh, you can follow us here on SoundCloud at The Real Pineapple 775, go ahead and like us on Facebook at The Real Pineapple, let us know what you think of our reviews, if you got any movies you'd like for us to review, we always love to hear from you guys, you can follow yours truly on the Twitter, J Hunter Real Pineapple, and you can follow Mr. Colin O'Neill on Twitter at The Real O'Neill. Guys, thank you so much. We'll have reviews up for uh, for the Brahms this week. Uh, we'll talk uh, we'll talk new Star Wars Rogue One trailer next week. I want to have everyone in on that, and we've got some other things to talk about as well. Guys, thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah.